thing we want in the Botanic Garden is a cat, so, you know, I was actually thinking of going and getting a cage from the uh, council so that we could trap this cat that I kept hearing for a while. So you thought it was a cat, what you were hearing at first, you thought it was a cat, and yeah. then you realised it wasn't a cat. It wasn't a cat, it was him, and it took a few uh, days of studying him and realising, yes, it was him, and coming out with it very nicely. So it's obviously been and heard a cat somewhere, and it just picked it up. And, uh, well, you developed a bit of a relationship with this yeah, bird. Yeah, that's why I got my hat on, because it knows me with my hat on. And I come in very early into the gardens, and uh, it's always curious to see what I'm doing, so it's always flying ahead of the direction I'm walking in. To, and, uh, yeah, it's like keeping tabs on me. And, um, yeah, it seems to know we, wherever I'm going. And do you think he trusts you? Oh, yeah, I think so. I can get within a foot of him and he doesn't bother, you know, he's not bothered. Mm -hmm. um, if I've got uh, strangers or I haven't got my hat on, he'll fluff his feathers out and he'll grab little bits of other uh, the bush tomato, things like that, which is nearby him, and he'll throw them at you. And he sort of flicks them and, and, you know, you're a bit too close sort of thing. Put my hat back on and he settles right down. With the, some of the things that the male bower bird brings into his bower, like kumquats, and um, they've got to be nice and green, and even immature chilies. He had quite a lot of them last year, and grey, and somebody that had silver pegs around the place, um, he pinched a lot of them and placed in his nest, and bits of bones and bits of white things. But he'd change it all around all the time and as something shriveled a bit, he'd cart that away and toss it into the scrub. You, know. you showed me this fellow here. I mean, he was on his own, but he was still doing his little dance around the place. What What's going on there? There's no females around. Uh, not that we know, you know, because they, they, they can be very quiet when they want to be. And if you really stop and study around, you'll quite often find a female just sitting and looking because they don't tend to come into the bow until they're satisfied that it's just right isn't it? and uh, if a female accepts the, the how the bow is she's very submissive and she'll stand in the bow and uh, the male really runs amok then he does this crazy little dance and it's very amusing he, he gets even very clumsy he trips over himself with excitement and things like that We've had a few bowerbirds at our place in the suburbs, but not apparently a male bowerbird. Like there's a few females that come there and look for food and so on. They're very curious birds, yeah. aren't they? And they seem to be watching, looking. Is that your impression that yeah. they're a, a intelligent? Oh, I think they're a very intelligent bird. Usually late afternoon, up behind the back of the uh, visitor centre there, where our offices are. Um, they'll quite often come to, in underneath the back there and just check out what I'm doing, because they know I'm usually up there scratching around, finishing off things and watering some of our young plants. And, and uh, yeah, they've got to come and have a look. Plus, it's near the water hole and they can have a drink there and then they check out if there's any crumbs and scraps around the place which we discourage anybody to feed them because it, it'll detract away from them mm. and uh, their uh, cycles that they've got to go through. Well, they certainly like this place, they've given it the Bowerbird seal of approval. I think it's, it. yeah, it's Bowerbird home here. <laughs> <laughs>